Hey hey everybody, this is Larry. This is the fourth day of the July Lead Code Daily Challenge. Uh, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, join the Discord, let me know what you think. Uh, I'm gonna go into the explanation right now, and then afterwards you could see me attack this problem live. Uh, but basically, ugly numbers too. You're given three prime numbers and you're trying to find uh, the kth number that is divisible by a combination of those three numbers, right? And in a, in a sort of... Um, the way that I would think about it is just building up from, you know, uh, one by one, right? And the, and the way that I would think about it is now you have, you know, three cues. Uh, you start with one on each of those three cues. Um, and then you slowly, um, with, as you DQ from that number, you go, okay, let's say you, you have the number one. Well, now you know that from number one, that two, th three, and five are ugly numbers because because uh, by definition, 2, 3, and 5, you know, uh, builds off that. And then, well, next next smaller number, the next smallest ugly number then in that case is 2, right? And then 2, you go, okay, 2 is an ugly number. The next ugly number or the next possible ugly numbers next uh, after 2 will be 4, 6, and 10. And, and then the next number after that um, will be 3, and then three, you go, okay, three is an ugly number, so the next ugly number possible is six, nine, and 15. Why does this work? Well, the the, the way that this works is just it tries to build one prime factor at a time, meaning that, you know, if you have three, uh, you, you know, it's okay to do two times two, then that keeps the invariant, and the invariant is always something that I talk about in my stream. The invariant is that every number that we process are... Every number that we process is an num ugly number, and from an ugly number, we can generate more additional ugly numbers. Uh, the only thing that's a little bit tricky about it is that well, you have to constrain them, or you have to um, you have to construct them in increasing order. Because if you don't, then then you may miss one, right? Like if you did the three before the two, well, then maybe you're gonna miss four, and then you're gonna miss twelve or something like that, right? And there are a lot of you know, so it makes sense to kind of keep them in a sorted order. And as I kind of ex do my explanation or visualization, I go from left to right, from small to highest, right? And so then the train of thought should be that, okay, I need a data structure that allows me to get the smallest number every time. Uh, and then there's one additional problem. The, the additional problem is that, well, the number six, right? For example, it is two times three. So you could go from two and then three, or you could go from three and then two. But if you have, if you do it in a naive way and you put it, you know, if you try to process it twice, then you may get the wrong answer if you process it twice. So we kind of put them, putting all these things that we said together, um, the thing that allows us to keep on getting the minimum element of some, some container, right? Some container that lets us keep on getting the minimum element. Well, a priority queue or a heap will do that for us. And then to make sure that we don't put the same thing into the priority queue multiple time, uh, we will just use a set. Uh, and, that, and actually, it, um, I think you can, th that's the way that I implement it. Um, but I think in certain, so this is in Python, of course, I think in C++, you could use something like a set to get the smallest number and, and also possibly a binary or oh, sorry, a balanced binary search tree where you, you know, make sure that uh, everything you add is unique. So there are other options. Use whatever is uh, familiar with you. But the point that I want to make is uh, when you solve a problem, you don't start with a data, or the, the way that I don't, I do it is I don't necessarily solve the data structure in mind. I keep on trying to find myself to ask the right, the, a better question, a question that I could rephrase and then keep on rephrasing after I make an observation. And then I ask myself at the very end, like, okay, what do I know that fits these criteria, right? And for me, like I said, uh, I, I'm trying to find the min element every time uh, with no duplicates, right? In Python, that, that could be part of queue and, and a set. In C++, it may just be, you know, a set. And other languages may have, you know, different variants and, and that will affect how you implement your code. But still, the idea is that, you know, if you have a perfect abstract data type, then you just plug it in, right? 
Um, and yeah, and that's why I have for this problem in terms of explanation. I'm going to go over the code right now. So as I said, in Python, I did it with priority queues. Uh, so I set up the priority queue. I, I set up the set of things that we've seen, as I mentioned. I start up by pushing the invariant of one. It's just the identity for multiplication, right? So then now every time I loop, make a loop, I take the thing off the top, I pop it. And that means that I have one number off the list. And if it's if all the numbers are done, then we but then we're done, um, and we could return the current x. Otherwise, for the current number, we just multiply by two, three, and five. And if we haven't seen it already, we put it in the heap, and then we mark it as that we don't want to add it into the heap again in the future. Uh, so this is also something that you know we make sure that everything will be on the in the heap at most once. Um, yeah, in terms of complexity, you could ask yourself, uh, well, because each number that's on the list can only create three additional numbers. Uh, and so when n is at most 1,700-ish, then at most there'll be 5,000-ish numbers on the in the list. So that's how I come up with O of n is equal to about, well, just O of n. Um, I make this claimers later where Usually in complexity theory or complexity analysis or whatever, uh, n is actually the input size. So even with, the, and in this case, the input size is the number of bits, which is, you know, uh, 32 bits uh, for a normal int, say. Um, and that means that even if this was quote unquote O of n, it's not linear in the size of the input. So just want to be pedantic about it because you, it might, be something that you've thought about. Uh, and then now, because at most, each number is going to be in the priority queue once because we made sure of it by having the scene array, that means that the, each number will only be processed once. So we have all of n numbers to be processed. And for each number, we make a heap query, um, we make a heap pop, we may make up to three uh, heap pushes, and we do eh, some look up on a hash table, which, you know, depending on your language and stuff or, or your preference or implementation of preference, but let's say it's, you know, all of one, right? So each number will do all of log n work. And together, that means that, you know, the number of, the number of things we need to process is all of n. Each processed item takes all of n or all of log n. So together, it takes all of n log n. Uh, and then in space, it's a lot easier to uh, analyze, which is that, you know, well, we have a set, so O of n space. Uh, we have a heap that goes up to O of n numbers, so also O of n space. So yeah, so now we have an O of n log n and O of n algorithm. Uh, again, this is n in terms of the input parameter, not to be confused with the input size. Um, okay. But yeah, but overall, this is a bit of a tricky problem if you have never seen it before because it's a little bit mathy. But once you've done it and you play around with it, I think it should be okay. I think the the observations that I made earlier with the with the going from smallest to highest, and then also just you know from each number multiplying by two, three, and five. Uh, once you do it, you probably be okay at it. But you know, try to get as much understanding as you can get. Um, hmm, what is the else? Uh, but yeah, but I, it comes up here and there. But I I'm okay with it. I'm not a fan of it, but, you know, it comes up. Uh, okay, that's all I have for this problem uh, in terms of explanation. Stay tuned for the live portion, or live coding portion, uh, right about now. Uh, hey, everybody, this is Larry. This is the live portion of the video. Uh, on the 4th day of July, Lead Code Daily Challenge. Let me know what you think. Uh, agree number two. Write a program to find the nth ugly number. Ugly numbers are the positive numbers whose factors only include 2, 3, and 5. Okay, and n is less than 1690. Uh, okay. So yeah, so the idea behind this one is just using... Um, so if there are more numbers than three numbers, you would use something like a priority queue. But I think for now, we can actually just use a regular queue. Uh, and not a, you could do it as a, a sort of an implicit queue, if you will. But, uh, and you could still do a priority queue. Okay, maybe I will. Yeah, maybe I will do a priority queue just to kind of do how, how to do it. Uh, let's think about how I would do it with a priority queue. But the basic idea is that you start with one, and then for every number, 
u times two, three, or five, and then you just put the next numbers in the the priority queue. Um, yeah, and that's pretty much it. Yeah, and I think that's pretty much it. Uh, I think this is a technique that I learned a long time ago, so I don't know if it's well known per se, but it's definitely something that people do. Mm. But yeah, okay. Let's let's get started. Uh, the, let's just go PQ is equal to and this is uh, Python has a little bit weird priority queue syntax and it's a min queue uh, or min priority queue. Sorry, but yeah. So then now we just we started with one. And now while well, length right here is greater than zero. Well, that that will always be greater than zero, and greater than less than zero. Well, for every one that we pop, we minus one, and then we just let's build a number of sets. Uh, uh well, let's build a set of numbers we've seen. And then now we just do for uh, let's call multi multiplier maybe in two, three, five. Oh, I have to get the number, so let's get x is equal to pq of 0, uh, pq dot pop pq. And then now we just, well, we see if the next number, next number is equal to multiplier by x. And then if next number is not in scene, then we just put in the heap. <laughs> and we also set scene as you go, or we set the next the scene to be seen. Uh, and then that's pretty much it. And then at the very end, um, I think if we could do it in a number of ways, but if n is equal to zero, then we return x. I always may be a little bit off by one, depending on how they define the first number and so forth. Uh, but yeah. Oh, by the way, I think I, I typed what I was saying aloud, but yeah, hmm, oh, is it heap Q? I always forget it a little bit. Okay, so let's try, well, let's try the last number, I suppose, and just numbers in between, is zero by the number, let's see. Is that too big? Nope. I mean, yes. Okay. Okay. One of them is not routed. I suppose it's the zero one. Oops. Just wanted to make sure. Okay. Positive numbers. Okay. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Timing looks pretty okay. So that's a myth. Cool. Uh, yeah, and there you have it. So what is the um, what is the complexity of this, right? That's a little bit tricky to do. Uh, what is the what is the last number anyway? I actually didn't notice, but but you could actually look at it as a sort of a um, dynamic programming of sorts uh, by going from left to right. But I just use a heap queue. Uh, this number is pretty big actually, but. <clears throat> At any given time, uh, each number that you relax will only have, uh, will only insert up to three numbers. So that means if your if your n is up to seventeen hundred, then you only go up to the, f you know, the the number of items in the set or in the heap in this case will only go up to five thousand, give or take. Right? I mean, we could play around, just print it out actually. Oh no, PQ. Also, this is then. Hmm. I can tell my computer is a little bit slow, but uh, but yeah. So that the time complexity will be roughly three times n because we only relax three times n numbers. Uh, 
or we create three times n numbers on each thing, so it'll be three times n, so it'll be all of n. Uh, and again, I'm a little bit pedantic about these things, so that the n, usually when people say n, even though n in this case is the input of the method, uh, n in common terminology and complexity theory or whatever, it, it's all usually the input size. And in this case, the input size is actually the number of bits, which is, well, in this case, like 32 or whatever, right? 32 bits. Um, or even less than that, I guess, if you want to squeeze it. But my point still is that, so in theory, it is not linear. Um, it is O of n, in that it is O of small n in the input, but it is not linear. Um, just want to be clear, because some people get caught up in that sometimes. Uh, oh. I put this inside the loop, that's why it was taking a while. Actually, let's put it right before we return. Um, this is just for illustration. But in terms of space, uh, for the same reason, because we only look at each number once. Uh, oh, sorry, I, I forgot about the heap part. So it'll be all of... So the number of numbers that we process, let, let's actually break it down, because I think I was just a little bit sloppy in saying it, you know, I, I uh, because I was trying to get to the bit size portion. But yeah, so let's say this one, there's uh, O of N num number is to be processed, where N is the input, not input size. Uh, and again, we said it's something like three times N. Uh, and then for each one, we'll take at about log of 3n, which is about log of n, right? So log of n, uh, O of log of n anyway, uh, per number processed. So the total running time will be O of n log n. And again, just to be clear, n is not the input size, it is the number that is the input variable. Uh, okay, yeah, so, ooh, it's actually... Huh, so it's actually way smaller than that even because of the number of, uh, yeah, so my really pessimistic numbers is that doesn't even match up. But So it, it runs really fast, but that's my back of the envelope would have been that just, just three times n. I mean, I knew that there would be, you know, overlaps, but just for the big O, I just want to be pessimistic in talking about it. Um, and the worst case is 5,000, and it doesn't really matter how much smaller it is. Uh, in terms of space, I get, uh, we put each number in the set once and each number in the heap once. So that will be O of uh, O of n for this n. Again, that input size is the is the input parameter. So yeah, so that's the running time and and running time and the space complexity. And this comes up, I would say, roughly once in a while for competitive programming. Uh, this kind of philosophy, uh, but it's not a thing um, and I think for interviews a little bit awkward because it requires a little bit of knowing mathematical algorithms um, which eh, you could debate where the bar is at uh, it's not something that I would necessarily uh, play around with uh, because it deals with all these things but once you get the idea once then maybe you could redo it without necessarily knowing all the how this works uh, which I hope that I explained earlier in the, the preview version but yeah, that's all I have for today, and that's all I have for this problem. Let me know what you think. Let me know what your questions are, uh, and I will see y'all tomorrow. Bye-bye. <laughs>